Welcome to our simulation center at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. My name is Emily Tarver and I'm an assistant professor of emergency medicine here at UMMC. And today we're going to talk about some modifications that we made to Arthur here, our mannequin, in order to simulate uh, bleeding from a tracheostomy tube secondary to a tracheo-innominate artery fistula. So let's first talk about the pump and the artificial blood. For this, um, these modifications, please refer to our supply list to get a complete review of all the things you'll need for this modification. First of all, you'll need a peristaltic pump um, to be able to pump the blood from the container out through the tracheostomy tube. Um, you'll also need um, a container of artificial blood. We made this blood with basic water and phenolphthalein indicator solution. So what you'll do is you'll put some drops of the phenolphthalein indicator solution in your container of basic water and just put enough drops until the color, it turns a dark magenta to your liking. Um, the nice thing about this artificial blood is that once it hits your mannequin and your stretcher, it disappears. So it kind of turns clear. That way it doesn't permanently stain any of your equipment once the simulation is over. So once you've done that, you're gonna connect tubing from your pump into your container of artificial blood, and then you're gonna also connect tubing from your pump into the mannequin. So now let's talk about some of the modifications that we made to Arthur himself for the simulation. The first thing that you wanna do is remove the chest plate. And after that, inside the cavity, you're gonna remove his right lung. So you're going to take his right lung off, and then when you do that, in place of that, you're going to connect the right main stem to a 6.5 ET tube adapter. You're then going to connect the pump tubing from the pump itself to that adapter. In addition to that, you're going to clamp the left main stem with an umbilical cord clamp or some similar device, and that way, when the pump is on, you're not pumping fluid into that left lung during the case. In order to get the tubing into the mannequin, we drilled a hole on the side of Arthur on his right, similar to this hole on the left. That way you feed the tubing directly through the hole, the pump tubing, and then you connect to your ET tube adapter. The reason this helps is because if you try and put the tubing directly under the chest plate, it's gonna get blocked when you put the chest plate back on Arthur. So that's mostly what we did for modifications to his chest parts. The next thing I'm gonna talk about are modifications that we made to his stoma for the case as well. For the stoma itself, we had to enlarge the hole in order to make enough space for the learner to perform the Utley maneuver at the end of the case. We just took a scalpel and we slightly enlarged the stoma here. You're going to have two layers that separate in the plastic when you do that. And because of that, you're going to have to reapproximate re those layers with super glue. Otherwise, you've got two loose layers of plastic here in the stoma. So once you've done that, you're ready to go. The last thing you're going to want to do is use a laryngoscope to take a look at the larynx and occlude the larynx, just like in the case the patient has laryngeal cancer. So get a, a video laryngoscope, take a look at the larynx, and then you're going to want to use a material. We used a synthetic material from our dental school to completely block the larynx like his cancer would have done but uh, syn a synthetic silicone type material would probably work fine. We've got some still shots of what that looks like in the paper as well. So let's take a look at what happens when you have your uh, tracheostomy in the mannequin. And we're gonna turn the pump on. And this is how it, you'll simulate bleeding from the tracheostomy during the case. If your balloon is down, you'll notice that you're gonna have blood coming from the stoma itself, which is fine, but there is a difference in effect whether the balloon is up or whether the balloon is down. 
So that's good to take note of for the case itself. So that concludes the modifications to the mannequin itself. The last part of this talk were just some extra things that we wanted to mention about the simulation uh, and the debriefing that might help when you're preparing for this case with your learners. All right, so let's uh, conclude with um, a discussion on the simulation itself. Please refer to our supply list for the simulation just to make sure you have all the materials that you need for the case. A couple things that you're really going to want to have are items from your airway cart, and that's going to include some downsized cuffed and uncuffed endotracheal tubes and tracheostomy tubes. This is particularly important at the end of the case because when the learner performs the Utley maneuver, they're going to have to put in a smaller sized trait or ET tube in order to fit their finger in the stoma and perform that maneuver. You're also going to want to have suctioning that's specific to the tracheostomy, and you're gonna to wanna to have the appropriate size syringes for your cuffed tubes. You may also need a bougie or other exchange type device uh, if the learner asks when they're replacing a cuffed for uncuffed tube. So all of your air, airway equipment is very, very important for the case. Um, we also had some fake blood for when the learner needs to order an emergent blood transfusion when the blood pressure is dropping and the patient continues to bleed. So it helps to have some of those supplies as they're going through the case. To go over the debriefing in general, we actually did a bedside debriefing and, and stayed in, um, in the actual site and didn't go into our conference room. Um, this helped a lot for the learners because as the instructors were teaching some skills on suctioning, cuff inflation, deflation, and basic tracheostomy maneuvers. It was very helpful to be at the bedside for that during the debrief. We also had a 3D model uh, that helped a lot in a review of basic anatomy with respect to um, bleeding from a tracheoanominate artery fistula. So if you have a 3D model, that would be great. It's just a review of what's going on um, during this case with respect to the bleeding. Even a 2D model would help, but something to bring out during the debrief as a basic anatomic review um, of what's going on during this case. And then one final point, uh, we had during the case, uh, a bedside nurse, um, simulated participant, and a patient family member that helped through the case. The nurse stood here at the um, pump device and was able to turn the pump on and off during the case um, when cued by the simulation operator um, by a series of coughs. Um, the patient family member was also able to provide a lot of additional history to the learners because the patient with the trach is not able to um, talk and give all that important history during the case. So those two folks are very, very important. And then two final points. We actually had five to six learners in each of our um, simulations, which was too many. I would recommend ideally one to two learners per case so that everyone gets that hands-on experience. Um, and then in addition to that, we gave 40 minutes per case. I would recommend an hour for the entire um, scenario. We felt like we were a little short on time in our debriefing uh, when we only gave ourselves 40 minutes. So I think an hour was a much more adequate time time period for that. So that includes some uh, points about our simulation itself. Um, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about the innovation or about the simulation, um, and I'd be glad to help troubleshoot whatever questions you have. Thank you so much.